Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. Back again doing some more work on Ravel's BF110 G2 R3. So where do we leave off? Well, last time we finished up we'd got the split the camouflage done and we did the mottling and basically all the base paint and layers done. So what I've done since then, in between Christmas and New Year, is I've done the decklin and I have done the yellow identification marking panels underside and on the tail and I've painted that just exactly the same way as I painted the rest of it so just straight on top of the other colour um, apart from the tail band on the, that I put a RO76 underneath that just to even the colour out with the dark camouflages then I've sealed it all down with a gloss coat and what we're going to look to do today is do a simple oil panel line wash just to highlight the panel lines and moreover with the oils we'll brush that back over the fuselage and that will blend in all the paint together to give us a really nice sort of homogenized look to the, to the model um, and it'll be ready for final oiling and final assembly and that will be the model finished. So enough waffling from me, let's get onto the table um, and get working. So welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop and here we are once again with the BF110 G2. Uh, since we left you um, I have completed the yellow identification markings on the underside of the aircraft and the yellow banding around the rear fuselage and I've also applied the, the decals. And Drop down a gloss coat to seal them on. Uh, they all went down really quite nicely, settled into the panel lines, uh, very little silvering. Uh, the yellow demarcation was sprayed just the same as I did the top coat, so it, there was no white primer underneath, it was just straight on top of the uh, uh, the RR76 um, underside. And again, I went over the panel lines first. To darken it down and then gently filled in the centers to get that mottled look. Um, I did however when I masked this tail flash off here then I uh, I did spray RLM76 around the top where the mottling was just to even the color out a little bit otherwise it would have been really obvious that there was darker camouflage underneath and then once I got the color unified I sprayed the uh, panel lines to darken them again and then fill the centers um, and I'm quite happy with it all looks really good so what next well I've also got the canopy masked and painted um, and glued on and we've got the rear gunners done so the cockpit's completely sealed now it's now time to do a little bit of weathering um, my weathering I don't like going overboard I like heightening and highlighting the panel lines and putting a bit of oil streaking on um, I'm not a huge fan of chipping, purely because I've not had much practice in it and I haven't had a really chipped an airframe massively. Um, apart from a couple of Japanese fighters, I quite like just the quick and easy basic look. Um, and once you've got that in the bag, then you can move on from there and look towards more complicated things. So what do I like using for my panel lines? Well, oil paints, um, Windsor & Newton and Rowney, uh, we've got Lamp Black and we've got Burnt Umber. Now you can get loads of different oil paints. These just happen to be ones I've picked up over the years. Um, 502 Abtide Long are really good, uh, purely designed for modeling. Um, and they do the same colors. But all you need is something to highlight the pattern lines. Now we've got we need a darker shade for the top surface because obviously darker paint but for the bottom it doesn't need to be dark I like to prefer a little bit more browny colour so that's where the burnt umber comes in and we'll just put a tiny tiny smidgen of lamp black in there just to darken it up a little bit more so how much have we got in well in the bottom of an old plastic tumbler shot glass we have got 
good sized dollop of burnt number and then just a smear of lamp black just to darken it down a little bit and my thinner of choice is AK's interactive odorless thinner I find it works really really well, thins the paints really well and helps them dry really quickly so what we do brush and then trickle the paint down the side of the brush go straight into it and we're looking to get a mix that is thin enough that it's going to flow in the panel lines and stick uh, sorry thick enough that it's going to go in the panel lines and stick but thin enough that it's going to flow now I start with a consistency probably about single cream just thick enough to hold its shape and then I'll add a little bit more until I'm happy with where I'm at Just a few drops at a time. There we go. Mix it together, touch the side of it, and it starts flowing down. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. So we're going to do the underside first. I've got a number two brush. You can use finer if you want, but we'll start with the number two and see how we get on. So we we'll just touch in. And nice and lightly running it over all the panel lines. There we go. All the joys. And it goes quite a way. You don't want to go just super heavy on it. You do want to go heavy enough that it's going to highlight the panels. There we go. And the beauty of this stuff is it's not as hot as enamels, although I have used enamels in the past. But oils do take a little bit longer to dry. They dry quicker with the thinners in. But they don't dry as fast as enamels and certainly not as acrylics if you're using acrylics to do your panel lines or some inks the other thing with oils is they can be reactivated especially when you put them down on top of a gloss coat so if you do get some that's a little bit stubborn to get off then all you need to do is take a cotton bud or a paintbrush just lightly moistened with thinners and it'll strip them back to the gloss coat but don't rub too hard because if you rub really hard then there's a good chance it could actually go through the thinners burn through and uh, take it back to plastic and you're back to square one and the touch and stuff you can see I'm, I'm pretty much lathering it on I know it's not as precise as maybe some folk do it but we're going for an overall effect here, and the thing is, when you when you clean off these panels, and if you're doing it with a, a cloth that's soaked in a little um, thinners, what will happen is is you'll actually um, you can use the the oils as a bit of a filter to modulate the all these blend in the modulated colours you've bit laid down. So you're looking to bring together all the different weathering you've done on the paint modulation. Unify it all blend it all together, add a bit of dirt to it, make the pan lines pop out, which then adds interest to your model. And just gives the viewer something to look at. The more detail there is then, the more they're going to cast their eye over it, the more they're going to see. Now, 
anywhere where there's a big trail and edge or something like tent, try and put a bit more in there because it's going to be naturally shadowed anyway. Just roughly around the activators and the hinges. We see some of the panel lines popping already. Uh, we've got some here along the leading edge slats as well. Trim tabs on there. The other one. I'm not doing any in the wheel wells because I'm going to wash the wheel wells. Same as in the air radiators as well, we're going to wash them too. Now the gravel kit's not bad. Um, but having done the Dragon kit, then I would say some of the details are a little soft. So if you're so inclined, you can go back in and rescribe it to deepen it up. But as this is purely a, a build to sort of showcase how I like to build models, I wasn't just too fussed. Um, Certainly if you're going in for competitions, then you really do need to be looking at harmonising all your panel lines, get them all the same. But in the case of this, we're not worried. I know this looks like we're completely hashing the model up, but as I said, the beauty oils, it's, it's not a harsh way of doing it. Very, very easy to, to rectify if you've gone too far. But a very quick and easy way of doing what we're doing. So the panel lines are a little bit more pronounced. And I could have probably used a slightly thinner oily mix. And just float it, touched and float in all the panel lines. But I'm happy enough to do it this way. And the brown really does stand out nicely against the, the sort of bluey colour. Doesn't overpower it. If it was black, chances are it would probably overpower it a little bit and make the panel lines hugely stark and a little bit unrealistic. doesn't take just too long either because we're just kind of crashing it on and it's not long before we've got this all done said some folk will just thin it slightly and do a touch and flow um, other folk will actually cover the whole airframe every last bit of it I just prefer to paint over and then we'll go do the rest of that now before you remove you do need to let it dry off a little bit just so it's got a chance to grip into the panels panel lines. Um, otherwise you can just wipe it off and you'll have nothing left. So let's just set this down and we'll start on the top. Now, I think this is probably going to be actually dark enough for what we need on the top so we're just going to crack on. Yeah it's going to stand up nicely. thing about this is 
it's quite nice at blending in the decals as well. So if you've got one or two decals that are a little bit stark, especially the ones with the white in it, then you can put a little dash of this over it. It'll knock the white back a little bit. To the point that it makes them look a little bit more realistic. Uh, lots of little hatches on the wings, so we'll just make sure we get all of them because obviously they're easier to do with fuel and whatnot. So the thing with this is time. You want to just get it on. Doesn't take long. Put them over in the air filter. And I'll take it over the tops of the engines. Right. Now let's get the tail plane done. The beauty of this particular model is you've got these flat surfaces everywhere, so it is actually quite easy to get on with this. And over the top. And we get the sides done. And the weight bottom, a bit too much on that. It won't matter. We'll dip back into that to get the rest done. Attention to the wing root. Not flashing there. And then on the bottom of the canopy. What we can do is just canopy rails as well because we painted the canopy separate and this will help blend it all together. And then along the nose there like that. And the sides of the edge. Make sure we've got pretty much everywhere, we don't want to miss too much. Right. Same again on this side. So I'll just start the back, work forward. You can also use um, clay based washes for this. Uh, there's a couple of companies out there that do them. And they're really a safe way of doing this sort of pan lining. Because obviously they're clay based and they're activated with water. So to get them off then they'll come off quite easily and I've used them before in the past um, use Phil Flory's washes that's a pretty 
pretty much moved on to oils now. They still have their place, I like using them for armour. They're really good for getting a dusty, rainy look on stuff, especially if you're in the sort of gulf regions where it's sandy, you can use fill sand wash to do that. But I really do quite like my oil paints now, um, just for speed as anything else. Right, we just need to get the vertical stabilizers done. It's actually really nice detail on these fellas. The other thing that this oil wash will do will help blend in the mottling that we've done. And that'll give it a nice bit of it'll just yeah, give it a bit of tonality. There we go. Make sure we've got all our lines. Okay, there we go, that's taken all of five minutes. Right, now what to do is kitchen roll time. We're gonna let this dry five minutes and then we're going to come back just once some of this last bits we've put on has dried up a bit and we'll start taking it off. So whilst this is drying the other thing we can do as well is we've got all the uh, undercarriage bays painted up on the little skewers and we've also got underwing stores painted up and we can give them a little bit of a, an oil wash as well just whilst we're waiting for this stuff to dry and then that will uh, that'll help to keep the weather and all done at the same time which gives again ensures that it's even and you haven't got a huge variation between the weather and the washes so it's the similar or same colour that's used throughout the model. Now, as you can see, we haven't made up a huge batch of wash, but it really does go quite a way. Um, and it'll go a real long way to highlighting the details, especially on the inside of the wheel wells. tanks so we can grip them by carefully by the legs because they're quite fragile and what we want to do here is do the banding around the foot of the legs and the pipe work that goes up in the fuselage and this will go an awful long way to bringing out the really fine detail that's on some of these parts especially the fuel lines that actually go up into the wings Being careful not to damage it as you go. Too much paint in there anyway. Around the bottom of the feet. Bring them out the way. Same thing in here. with these German underwing fuel tanks is the detail on is really pronounced so it doesn't actually take that much for the wash to settle in those pan lines really nicely and the rockets and we'll do the inside of the rockets because they're naturally going to be dark anyway that'll help for weathering them up there's obviously rockets that go inside these but that'll just together on the inside and the outside and we'll draw a line down where the, the two sort of rocket pods join together and on the feet dead, dead simple stuff this nothing technical here just 
Well, I had a bit of a wash. Now, if the truth be known, I actually think I haven't even sealed this with clear. So it'll be interesting to see how easy or not, as the case may be, this wash might come off these parts. A bit of a good illustration for folk to see. Anyway, that's that done. And whilst we've been doing that, the model itself is dry. So, clean kitchen towel, just ripped it up into sort of quarters, fold it on itself. Now you need to be careful when you're doing this, you don't break any parts off. Um, I've purposely left off all the counterweights um, and any antennas off the underside for this very reason. You can see it's nice and dry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rub, and we're going to rub in the direction of the airflow. So back and forth motion. Doesn't matter if you rub that way, just so long as the last few rubs you do is with the direction of the airflow. And you can see straight away the panels are nicely highlighted and it's the oil itself is acted nicely like a, a bit of a filter. You might be thinking, oh my mercy me, we've just ruined this paint job, but Believe me, we haven't. So let's get in here. Naturally, these aircraft were going to get, or do, did get quite dirty anyway. So we don't need to worry about. I would have not the undercarriage. We don't need to worry about them being discoloured or anything like that, because they would have been. But this might actually be quite a stark colour change. We've got a trick up our sleeves that we can sort this out on. That will come next. Detail gets a bit full of paint, and then we can just turn it over, fresh bit, and I'll start absorbing away. There we go. see it's definitely filling in all the pan lines it's also taking a bit of shine off all the paints are brilliant for knocking back a gloss of satin varnish you can see the shine on the light so I was using it to illuminate it and the oil will knock that back brilliantly there we go one thing I should be doing is wearing gloves because because this oil paint is so wet, it's actually really easy to leave fingerprints in it. And obviously because Vallejo paints are really soft, if you're not careful, you can be left with fingerprints melted in. Now thankfully this has been drying for quite a little bit of time, so chances of me actually leaving fingerprints are slim, but you've still got to be wary of it. So we're taking a great bulk of it off, but there's quite a bit left on. We're certainly blending the decals back. Taking the harshness out of the yellows and the whites and the reds. Definitely blending in this splinter camo. There we go. That's 
looking really nice now. There's a matte finish, certainly a satin finish. We haven't even touched it with any varnishes to seal it. So. given that quite a nice patina and that's what it's all about it's about getting the paint aged in scale I suppose but you want to get that worn look where the paint's picked up grime when it's been flying and when it's been in, in maintenance and you've had personnel walking over the airframe and general sort of grime and Natural elements and weather have just worn at it. There we go, right. We still have quite a bit of paint in here. There we go. So, what we're going to do here, I hear you This is where. We need to get some cotton buds or Q-tips for you persons that live on the other side of the water. So we'll try and take as much off as we can with the kitchen towel. Need to be careful around the undercarriage. Yeah, there we go. Now you can see with a second going over it, we're getting down through it. There you go, and you can see how it's bringing together all that highlight and the low lighting that we put in there. The one sort of unified layer, although it's many different layers of paints. Right, I'm just going to put this down a moment, and I'm going to go and get some cotton buds and then we'll uh, get on the nuts and crannies and show you how to how to just take back some of the heavier stuff that's been a bit more resilient to the rubbing so hold on a sec right I've just been gotten cotton buds dipped in a little bit of thinners and I'm just taking the worst off because I don't want it to be too full and then what we can do is we can just there we go run in all these tight spots here under the guns now the beauty of these things when they're dipped in oil is, yeah, it will strip the excess away, but it'll also carry a little bit of the oil with it, and it'll just put a little bit of a filter onto the panels. So, there we go. so any anywhere that's not had a little bit of oil on it, you can get a little bit of a filter from the oil on it, and then that will again ensure a uniform finish. Now, with this, it's quite it's quite important to go with the flow of the air, purely because if if you're leaving any streaks behind, then it looks like oil that's been spilt and it's just gone with the airflow. Little bit of thinness it's on the cotton swab it's just activated the oil again and we can take our try to get a hold of it clean bit of kitchen towel get in there and rub down through and you can see the mark there if we give that a little bit of a burnish there we go it's gone and that's brought it back quite considerably so Let's have a go on the rest of the wing. So, again, I'm just 
just dip the cotton swab into the old mustinas. Just remove it on and then rub some off. good thing about this is if you have laid any fingerprints in it will help get rid of them and the other good thing with this is you can use it for a nice streak finish so you don't actually have to go over this with the uh, kitchen towel you do have to be careful you don't strip too much oil out now if you do do that absolutely nothing stopping you going back in with a brush and because it's got a little bit of thinners there it'll help it all flow in you can take a clean cotton swab vanish it away you can go back as many times as you like just to get the finish you want Beauty of the cotton swab as well, is you can get into these open outlets and that will there we go. That will give you a nice even look inside. So just take the brush, take the towel and gently bring it back. Now we don't want to get rid of all the streaks we put in, we just want to lighten it. So if you look at this side here compared to this side here, then it's still got a bit of oil staining on it, but it's not as heavy. So if you want it to be lighter still, then you can just take your clean paper towel and just give it a rub again. There we go. And that is that's pretty good. Pretty good for there. Engines tend to be mucky places anyway, so you'd expect to see a little bit of oil in amongst them. Around there. What I'm going to do once we've got the exhaust stacks in, it's been broken a piece off. There we go. The one's infallible. When we get the exhaust stacks in, then I'm actually going to come back in with some more oils and we'll paint in some oil leaks on the engines. That's something I just like to do purely because. World War II aircraft leaked, same as World War One aircraft leaked, same as modern aircraft leak, all aircraft leak, hydraulic fluid or engine oil. So I'm going to get a clean, clean Q-tip, some fresh, a fresh thinners, and we're just going to get into this side now. Reactivating that oil. And you can do this a few days after you've done it, you don't have to do it straight away like I have. You can do this probably up to a week anyway until the oil's fully cured off. But we can go back in with a, a moist cotton bud and reactivate the oil and move it around. There we go. There we go. Clean paper towel. Pad your finger. And drag it back. Look at that. So that brings the vibrancy of the colour back, removes a good proportion of the oil wash, and blends all that paint layers in together. So you get one homogenous finish. Right, let's get the inlets done. So I'm going to go in those inlets there. And we want to go in at the back. There we go. And we don't want to leave any areas with too heavy a patch of oil paint because it might look a little unnatural. I want to have a similar sort of level of similar level of weathering all over the airframe. I said we'll go in later and we'll put in some specific areas or leaks and stuff like that. Right, so I'm going to crack on, go over the whole airframe, tidy up all these areas, and then we'll come back and we'll look at washing the wheel wells and cleaning up the ancillaries.
Right, so there we are. We've cleaned it up. Quite happy the way it is. Everything's been brought together. Panel lines are standing out nicely. And the model's got a nice patina. Um, yeah, really quite happy how it's come out. Quite a simple weathering job, but quite effective in setting your model off. Especially on the lighter colours on this side. Right, so there's another thing you can do. You can actually use your finger to blend oils as well. If you need to blend a bit in. So what we need to do now is obviously I have done the fuel tanks, highlighted them, they look a little stark but I'll go over them again once they're dried off just to burnish them back and we've also done the wheel, wheel, wheel bay doors. So what we need to do now is the wheel wells themselves and so we'll wash them. Now what we actually need is the same brush we had before, okay, so it's exactly the same. And all we're going to do is we're going to add a little more thinness to it to thin it down somewhat. And there we go. Scrape the stuff off the sides, get it all together. And then we touch the side and we can see it's running down the side nicely. So we've gone from quite a heavy oil wash to a pin wash. That's going to stick in the details and flow off the high points, which is what we want. Because the wheel wells are quite fragile, I've already nipped one piece off, which I'll have to glue back on. But we just want to highlight the details, and we just want to do it easily, so this is where a thin pin wash comes into its own. Because all we have to do is brush it on, and it will naturally, through capillary action, go for all the recesses, corner joints. Um, around any raised detail and then it will flow from the higher detail leaving that its original colour it is slightly muted a bit like a filter but it will bring wonderful detail to everything else I mean if you put that over everything and make sure you're going in and you're getting all the sides. If somebody's looking underneath they want to see that it's all there, it's all even. And there we go. So you can see there's the wheel we've done, there's the one we haven't. What a difference. So let's just show you how quick and easy it is. Plenty of wash and then you just dab it around. And when it's not moving so far, in for another lot. Get it in there and move it around. If it's collecting in one spot, just dip your brush into it, lift it, and move it somewhere else. And it will get to the point where it, it starts not to flow because it's running thin. You just go back into your, your reservoir, grab some more, and get it on. There we go. And that will give the wheel wells an actual shadow. It will also give them a bit of a grimy look. They will get oily and grimy if you have leaks and spills and mud and whatever else splashing up about these things. And mainly what it's going to do, you can see it there, just like a pin wash does, collecting around the edges of the raised detail, highlighting it. So it's giving it natural, forced shadow basically. But it's highlighting the details, making your eye look more interested into it because there's detail there to see. You've got shadows, you've got highlights, low lights. And the thing you need to be careful from is you don't just splash this around too much because obviously it is very thin. And if you flick your brush, it will splash onto your paintwork. Alright, if you're doing splash marks, but in this instance we're not, we just want to get a very loose pin wash into the undercarriage phase and on the undercarriage to highlight the undercarriage. Get the tires done as well. That will just change the hue on the rubber a little bit. There we go. And you see we've got a little bit here because it's so thin. We just go in and rub it away. Now don't dump the wash when you're finished with it because it will keep for a few days. 
and those little spots that you've seen on me cleaning up, what I like to do when I've done exhaust staining and, and whatnot is from way back, put them on a brush and then just gently flick it. And that'll give you oil splatters. It looks really nice. And it just adds another depth of weather into the model. So there we go. There is both wheel wells done. Weathered. Beautiful. And then if we look at the inside there, we've got a similar finish there. Now if we want to improve that, we can go back with the wash. And we'll just paint that on. And then you know you're going to have the same, if not a similar, finish on these, as well as the inside of the wheel wells. And that's the beauty of having these pre-painted, ready to go. You know it's all going to be the same. Usually neat. As I said, any of us over paint, and we'll just rip that off. Okay, that one's not too bad. We'll take a clean, a cleanish cotton bud. Yeah, look down the edges. Same with this one. Look down the edges. Always in the direction of the airflow. So any spills look like a bit of hydraulic leak that's been dragged down the airframe. Clean one. And same here, no, front to back. Right, there we go. That'll do for now. Um, stop the recording here. And the next thing to do will be getting the wheel well doors on, the under wing stores on. Uh, we still have the propellers to paint and need to reattach the antenna. And we can probably put the antenna wire on at the same time and give it a matte coat and then we can start unmasking the canopy and look for doing final weathering so exhaust stains and oil spills and fuel spills and whatnot. So there we go for now. That is a simple oil wash, highlight panel lines, simple oil wash in the wheel wells and on the underwing stores. Right, till next time guys, happy modeling.